Chapter 3, Life Cycle Inventory Analysis. 3.3 Allocation. The content in this video are as follows. Fundamentals of Allocation. Allocation by the example of co-production. Allocation and recycling in closed loops recycling. Allocation and recycling for open loop recycling. Allocation within waste LCAs. And lastly, summary on allocation. What is allocation? Allocation means the attribution of environmental burdens during the life cycle for co-production, recycling and disposal. Allocation by the example of co-production. In a simple chain section of a life cycle without co-production, the sum of the inputs I and outputs O of the life cycle is the sum of individual amounts. While co-production implies that at least two products are formed in one unit process. Fair allocation. In many processes, where more than one product is produced, it is necessary to divide the environmental impacts from the process between the products. However, the major task is to fairly allocate the environmental impacts, that is, inputs and outputs, to the products A, B, and so on. The choice of the attribute fair indicates that a strict scientific solution cannot be provided. In the science of economics, the problem of allocation has been known concerning the allocation of fair costs to individual products. Costs for individual products must be derived from the total costs. The following two important strategies are discussed. Firstly, the allocation per mass, the oldest and still the method of choice for many multi-output processes. Secondly, the system expansion, which is recommended method by ISO 104044. Allocation per mass. The allocation per mass requires that all inputs and all outputs are partitioned according to the mass ratio of the co-products form. If, for example, a unit process with two co-products A and B results in 700 kg product A and 300 kg product B per functional unit. According to this rule, 700 divided to 700 plus 300 equals to 0.7 or 70% of all emissions, energy consumption, ancillary materials, and so on, are attributed to A, and 30% to B. Example for an allocation per mass, allocation of interconnected multi-output processes. A simplified example is illustrated in the figure. Coal products 1, 2.1 and 2.2 leave the system and are employed in other product systems. Allocation usually starts with the process that exhibits the final product as output, as shown in the figure unit process 2. All inputs here are energy, ancillary materials, and intermediate products, and the outputs, which includes carbon dioxide and waste are distributed according to the mass ratio of the product output. The following loads are therefore allocated to 3 kg of the final product in process are 25 MJ energy, 1 kg of ancillary material 2, 1 kg carbon dioxide, 1.5 kg waste, and 3.5 kg of intermediate products. Only those loads of process 1 can be allocated to the final product that is related to the production is the 3.5 kg of the intermediate product input into unit process 2. However, according to the allocation per mass for unit process 2, only 50% of the intermediate product can be allocated to the final product. Hence, the loads in unit process 1 must be allocated correspondingly. If the allocation in unit process 2 were not done, the co-products in unit process 2 would never be loaded with consumptions and emissions of upstream processes. This would surely not be fair. To 3 kg final product, 50% of load from process 1 has to be allocated which has to be added to the load from process 2. Remember that, as said previously, only those loads of process 1 can be allocated to the final product that is related to the production is the 3.5 kg, which is 50% of the intermediate product input into unit process 2. In contrast, with system expansion the co-products remain in the system. In the case of system expansion, calculated loads are, however, allocated to a product mix of the total system including co-product 1, co-product 2.1, co-product 2.2, 
and final product. With this method, very large systems may be studied. This can make sense for an overall representation of the environmental loads of large industrial systems. Compared to the allocation of co-products, closed-loop recycling are straightforward. In the simplest case, a product enters the production chain of the same product again after use. It is evident from the figure that a 100% effective closed-loop recycling of the final product makes its disposal unnecessary and it also means that less raw material is required. The use of collected one-way containers in a new production after melting is also a part of CLR. Other examples of CLR include production scraps, for example, thermoplasts, glass and metals, which by melting can frequently be channeled back into the production process. The treatment of CLR in life cycle inventory analysis can be summarized as follows. In case of sufficient data, no assumptions have to be made. The processes can be derived by scientific technical means. An allocation problem does not occur because all processes take place within the system boundary. In contrary to CLR, open loop recycling represents a difficult case for allocations comparable to coupled production. The originally separated systems A and B are now contained in a common system boundary and connected by a box collection, transport, and processing. The reason is that the product in system A after its use phase can be fully or partially used as secondary raw material for the production in system B. A and B now form one system, and the problem is on how environmental impacts and resource uses to the subsystems are to be allocated. The question concerning the right allocation is, how are environmental advantages and disadvantages to be fairly or suitably allocated to subsystems A and B? System expansion avoids allocation, but the price is often too high. Typical secondary raw materials for open-loop recycling are waste paper and carton, waste glass, metal scrap, and thermoplastic polymers. For these secondary raw materials, well-developed collecting systems and applications exist. For instance, presently in Germany, newsprint and cardboard are produced from waste paper or waste carton. Nevertheless, it is rarely known into which product the secondary raw material from the examined system is integrated. System expansion in these cases is thus not feasible or only with very uncertain assumptions, usually only when the product group is known, whereby the secondary raw material is preferably applied. Allocation rules present an alternative to system expansion. Allocation per equal parts. The seemingly simplest and oldest rule is the so-called 1-1 or 50-50 rule. Waste avoidance in A gets a credit entry to even parts in systems A and B. Raw material saving in B likewise gets a credit entry to even parts in systems A and B. Allocation rules have to be defined if the functional unit should refer to the individual systems. For an assessment of system A via 50-50 allocation, system B need not be completely considered. Therefore, fewer data are required compared to system expansion. A further important rule, Rule 2, Cut-Off Rule, provides exactly defined separation boundaries between systems A and B, for instance at garbage collection or separation, and the loads of the two systems are assessed independently. Based on the system expansion, the cut can be defined in the process recycling. Consequently, in system A, all loads related to waste disposal are avoided. The recycled portion is not assigned as waste. There are no environmental impacts in connection with waste disposal. In system B, all loads related to raw materials are avoided. The portion used as secondary raw material has no loads owing to raw material extraction, no resource consumption, etc. These loads are completely allocated to system A. The environmental loads for the recycling are allocated to systems A and B according to defined rules. In the sense of a cycle economy, the rule is fair, it rewards both systems. A further rule, Rule 3, Overall Load to System B, defines as load of B the environmental loads of primary raw materials if B were exclusively produced from these. 
The delivering system will get the same amount as bonus, so that all loads will remain in B. Complete Life Cycle Assessment, LCA, is conducted cradle to grave, where the grave is called as end of life phase. This phase can be implemented as recycling or by the different conventional garbage disposal procedures, mostly by waste incineration and disposal sites. Two substantial questions need to be answered in the context of disposal in LCA. Firstly, modeling of waste disposal of a product. If a product becomes waste, the waste flows enter a disposal system. According to the determined average mass flows, the waste disposal is analyzed and modeled by an LCA. Secondly, a comparison of different waste disposal options. Different possibilities of waste disposal are to be compared with one another. Both questions and their handling by system modeling are discussed in the following example, disposal of cardboard packaging. Modeling of waste disposal of a product. This figure presents schematically two disposal options for cardboard packaging. In this example, 80% of the cardboard packaging is assumed to be recycled and 20% to be burned in a waste incineration plant. The primary benefit of both options is the disposal of waste cartons. Both variants have, however, an added value. In the first case, which is the material recovery, the added value means a saving of 70 kg cardboard production from raw materials. While in the second case, which is the waste incineration, an extra 14 megajoule electricity and 80 megajoule heat are obtained. Added values must be considered in the assessment. Concerning the system modeling, there are two variants to what can occur to the 70 kg secondary material. 14 megajoule electricity and 80 megajoule heat. They can be reused for carton production in the same system, which in this case, it is closed loop recycling or they can be used in other systems, which, in this case, it is open-loop recycling. For a simplification of the examined system, it is often treated as a closed-loop system without the secondary material, electricity, or heat being used by the same system. For evaluation of saved environmental loads, equivalent systems are assessed, which are treated as credit entry in the examined system. Hereby the technical equivalence has to be verified carefully as shown in this figure. Since in the base system 70 kg cardboard is made available due to material recovery, production of 70 kg cardboard from raw materials can be avoided. Thus, the load of the production of 70 kg cardboard from raw materials are accounted for and subtracted from loads of the base system. Since the base system generates 14 megajoule electricity by incineration, this amount does not need to be made available otherwise. Therefore, the environmental loads for an electricity supply of 14 megajoule are balanced and credited to the base system. Likewise, 80 megajoule heat result from incineration. Again, an equivalent system has to be modeled, for example, the heat supply by incineration of light fuel oil in a defined plant. These environmental loads will be balanced and also credited to the base system. The treatment of the outputs from the waste treatment of products under consideration of open-loop recycling often leads to large systems that imply elaborate modeling. Therefore, a credit entry through equivalent systems is widely applied. Comparison of different options of waste disposal. LCAs are frequently employed to determine the environmentally most favorable option of waste disposal. In many waste disposal technologies, usable energy that can be used for the production of electricity or steam and hot water for district heating is generated. These added values have to be considered in an LCA by credit entry or system expansion. Added values may also occur for landfill by capturing of landfill gas and for mechanical biological waste treatment. The main idea of this basket of benefit approach is the equal benefit of the compared disposal routes. It is a prerequisite to a comparison of systems. And by consequence, the functional unit is mostly modified which involve the inclusion of added values. The figure shows the examined system if the goal definition of the LCA aims to find out which of the two systems, material recovery or incineration of waste cardboard, is more environmentally friendly. The functional unit of the system, in this case, is the disposal of 100 kilograms of cardboard. 
The system expansion conducted here is done according to the same logic as in the previously discussed case of coproducts. While system expansion is seldom used for coproducts, its application in the assessment of waste disposal systems is commonplace. Here, no reasonable alternatives exist, and the systems mostly remain feasible. Since waste incineration with energy generation in system B implies an added value of 14 megajoule electricity and 80 megajoule thermal energy per functional unit, these amounts of energy have to be added to system A where no energy is formed. Assumptions must be made on the complementary processes. The functional unit can now no more be defined as the disposal of a specific mass waste but by disposal plus supply of energy. The winner will be the system that provides the waste disposal and additional energy supply with the smallest environmental loads. These are the recommendations in the case where system expansion or reduction for reasons either of price or practicability and usefulness are not possible. Firstly, mass proportional allocation if necessary, including a weighting by means of prices of co-products. Secondly, 50-50 rule or cut-off rule with open-loop recycling. Thirdly, other allocations with open-loop recycling following the goal definition, and if necessary, in coordination with the most important actors. Fourthly, credits in case of consideration of the waste management in product comparisons. And lastly, basket of benefit method within the comparison of waste management technologies. This is the reference list in making this video. That's it the end of this video. Thank you for watching. If you find this video helpful, please give a like. Don't forget to subscribe for more.